this is private bin it is a paste bin so you can share code snippets passwords all of that good stuff and then once it expires you can never get it again even on the server it's all encrypted you can't even access it from here it's all client side based so it's really awesome especially if you are security conscious so i'm going to show you how you can get this all set up using docker compose Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to show you how you can set up Private Bin using Docker Compose. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say a big thank you for all the support lately. It's been awesome. Uh, all the documentation for this, all the steps, all the breakdowns. So if you want more in-depth breakdown on how things work, all the steps, uh, more specifically around the Docker Compose contents itself, it's all found in my doc. So the link for that will be in the description below. So make sure to check it out. Also a link to the Discord is also there. So if you're keen to have a chat, if you've got any questions or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord and ask there or even just ask in the YouTube comments below. So make sure you're all subscribed and let's get into it. So this is private bin. Now, if you're not familiar with how a paste bin sort of works, let me quickly explain how it works. So what we can do over here is let's say I wanted to, to share a temporary password with someone. So let's just say, you know, uh, testing one, two, three, I wanted to share this with someone. So what I could do is I can click send. And then what's going to happen is it gives me a link that I can share with someone. So let's say I, I send that link to someone and then they paste it in their, their URL and hit enter. You can see that they then get that password so they can now access it they can copy it do whatever they wish with it and then they're good and you can say you can see here that it actually expires in six days so that's a thing once it expires it can never be accessed again and let me kind of show you how that actually works so if i come back here again and let's just do password one two three i can click something like burn after reading and then what happens there if i click send again it's going to give us our link I paste that in, hit enter. Now you can see we've got password one, two, three, right? And at the top here, it says for your eyes only. Don't close this window. This message can't be displayed again. So what that means is as soon as I hit refresh, it's gone. It's deleted. You can't even get this anywhere. The server doesn't have it. It's all encrypted. It's all decrypted via the client side. So it's gone. Right, so this is really good for sharing sensitive information um, or just something that you you know you don't want it to last long. You just want it to you know something temporary. This is really good, and it's not just for that. Even such things such as code snippets. So if you want, you can change the formatting on how you want to do things. So at the top here, we've got format, and if you wanted to do, to do a bit of source code, you could click here, and then you could put some source code in here, and it'll format it all nicely. So you can see here you can change when it expires so you know one week might be too long five minutes ten minutes whatever so this is where you can kind of choose that or you can have never if you really want a really cool thing i like is the open discussion so if we click here and let's go let's talk about food i don't know whatever right so let's click there and hit send now whoever has this link and you can see i have it set as the uh, the code um format but that's okay so let's say we share this link right and we maybe we share it with a few people or a team or whatever now there's this will live for six days and now you can have comments here so if we and it's all and you can have it anonymous if you want you don't even have to put a nickname you don't have to log in or anything so whoever has this link can now talk so i can go hello post a comment you can reply hello right post a comment so these are all just different you know it's anonymous you can't see who's posted this but whoever's got the link can jump in this and communicate and reply or add comments or whatever so that's a really neat feature and you can see at the top here you can save it you know email qr code all of that good stuff to access it so i think that pretty much explains how private bin works it's a paste bin it's really cool and we can self-host it so let's actually show you how you can self-host it yourself so i just want to quickly take a moment to say again i have a documentation page for this right so if you feel like i might be jumping over a few things or not might not be getting specific enough it's because i've got the documentation for it where you can spend your time and read more about it so here is where you'll find the docker compose file i, I will cover this compose file and I'll, I'll deploy it all in this video but again i just want to just point out you know if you if you're keen on understanding every aspect of the compose file it's all explained in the documentation page here the individual steps for deploying it, key things to keep an eye out for. Uh, I'll also raise those in a second. 
and also how the directory and all the contents inside the directory uh, work and why they're there. So if you've got questions around that, they're all here and that can be found in the description. Right, so we are on my server now. So this is where I have my private bin Docker compose. So I, the way I do it is I normally make a folder called Docker and then in there I'll make another folder for any container that I'm running where their compose will live and any of their bind mounts that they might be using. So let's jump into the compose file and I'll take you through it. So this one here is, again, if you want the more in-depth around why all these are here and why they work, how they work and why they're there, uh, the documentation explains all of this. But I'll cover the key points. So we're using the image here, which is the private bin image. Uh, the restart always, it just means that if the server restarts, uh, it will always come up unless you specifically say uh, for it not to. Uh, the read only means that the root file system is read only. You can't write to it. It's purely just read only. Now what I've got here is also the user. So the the container uh, and the user that I'm specifying for the container and you know where it can access. So the idea with this is that I don't use root for deploying my Docker containers, right? I have a user called TechDocs and that user is what's deploying these containers. And any of the files that live locally on my machine where the volume will live, so here, is also owned by TechDocs. So I want to make sure that this container can access the files that are made by the TechDocs user. So what this is saying is that this container will have access to any of the files made by TechDocs. So if you're, everything on your system is root, which it shouldn't, but let's say that's what you're doing, then you won't have to worry about this because by default, uh, when you create the container and this gets created, it will just be created via root, right? If you don't uh, manually create this and then you should be all right. So what will happen is if you're not using root and you are using a dedicated user, you need to make sure that you're using the correct UID and group ID for your user that owns this directory. Otherwise, when you try to create a paste, you'll get errors. Now, if you are getting errors around this and you're trying to get an idea on how this works, um, feel free to ask in the comments or jump into the Discord. But Generally, if you've just got the one user and that user was created by default, if you're using like Ubuntu server, uh, your ID should be 1000 as well. Now ports uh, 8082 is what I'm going is what I'll be accessing private bin on. Now you can change that 8082 to any port that's available. It's just that 8080 on this is used by something else. So 8082 is the next best thing for me. Uh, but again, change that to whatever you like. Now volume. So that what this looks like here is what this is doing is saying it's there's going to be a private bin hyphen data folder in this directory where the compose file is okay and it's going to be mounted to this directory in the container so since my folder is going to be owned by my user my TikToks user i need to make this directory first before i run the compose because if i run the compose first and this doesn't exist this folder will be owned by root and then the container can't talk to the folder and then i get that permission error okay so yeah so i'm going to make the uh the folder first and that's the compose again all the documentation explains this as well now another key note is that you have to access private bin via https so you, there's a few options you can go about doing that and i'll explain that in a second right so i need to make this folder here so let's do a make directory and there we go so now if i do an ll we can see that this is owned by TechDocs, right? This directory here. And if I didn't make this first and then ran it, it would be owned by root and I'd have that file permission issue. So now what we can do is we can clear the screen a little bit and we can do a docker compose up hyphen D. And there we go. Our container is now up and running, which is awesome. So let me show you what happens when you try access this like you would just like any other container locally uh, on the IP address. This is what we get. So it's saying here, your browser, your browser may require an HTTPS connection to support you know, web crypto API. So you get a whole bunch of errors, right? So there's a few ways you can host this via HTTPS. And a way that I would recommend is just using Cloudflare. And I'll have a link somewhere where you can check that out on. It's just a way that you can expose your Docker containers to the web using a domain name. And it's all free, all SSL um, certificates and all of that good stuff that it just does it all for you. Or you can use something like Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, I have videos to that as well. There's a few ways to go about it, but you have to have HTTPS to access this. So this here is all of my kind of domain names that I have for my 
uh, server and all the containers that I'm sharing. And you can see here that I have created a Cloudflare tunnel for pace.techdocs.nz, which is pointing to, let me zoom in a little bit for you, uh, to that IP address of my server and 8082 where that container is running. And what that does is it just maps it, that domain name to here so that I can go to pace.techdocs.nz and I can access my Pace bin. So if I go Pace, TikToks.nz, there we go. I've now connected to it. So that's how easy it is to set up private bin. But the whole thing with this is that it does have to be via HTTPS. So there's a few ways you can go about it. I would recommend Cloudflare tunnels um, if you don't really have anything else set up. It's just a real easy way to go about doing things. So that is essentially how you set up private bin, right? <laughs> you, you put the Docker Compose in there, you manually make that folder, and then you, whatever method you would like to use for exposing your service via HTTPS, that's how you go about doing it, and then you're good to go. So now we can do test one, two, three, I can send that, and then there's our link that we can go to. And if we come back to our server, we can see if we do maybe an ls into the private data, we now have some contents in here. And all of these contents are explained in the doc as well. Now, the 6.0 will be called something different um, each time it's kind of run. Uh, so I think it's called D7 in my documentation, but everything in there is still covered. So I hope that video was helpful, even just if you wanted to get an idea of just how private bin worked, um, make sure, yeah, to, to check it out. Uh, the doc is a great place to go just to follow along. It's got everything you need. Uh, if you get stuck or anything like that, YouTube comments or the Discord, I'm more than happy to help. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a great one. Bye-bye.